You are watching Coast Life, and we love summertime as a fun and exciting time of the year. Unfortunately, though, it can also be a very dangerous time of the year on our roadways. So here to tell us more is Jana Tidwell with AAA. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks. How are you, Leah? I'm doing really well. So what makes these summer months so dangerous for our drivers? AAA calls this period the 100 deadliest days, that time between Memorial Day and Labor Day, where unfortunately the crash risk of teen drivers doubles. Mm. Teens at this time of the year have a lot of unstructured time on their hands. Uh, many are going to summer jobs, uh, but they're also hanging out with their friends. They're doing things that the adults do in <laughs> summertime with their free time. But more time on the roadway increases the crash risk. And that's what we want to get the word out about because the, the chance of teen drivers being involved in a crash during the summer months doubles. It's double more than any other time of the year. So we're urging parents at this time of year to have a conversation with their teen drivers, explain to them what the dangers are out there on the roadways. Um, speeding, aggressive driving, you know, not stopping when, at, at stop signs, those rolling stops, distracted driving, not wearing your seatbelt, those kinds of things. Well, we th consider the basics really, but uh, maybe our teens don't always quite have a handle on that yet. Have you noticed at all, especially now that we have a lot of young drivers on the road who would have been in driver's ed during COVID times, any difference in driving patterns as sort of the aftermath of that? You know, we did see that a couple of years after the pandemic when the roadways literally reopened mm -hmm. and people could get back out there. There were adults who forgot how to drive. <laughs> uh, so at this point, you know, teens are getting in the allotted hours that they need. They can be out there on the roadways. So that does not seem to be an issue now at this point. Um, but I think amongst a lot of teen drivers, there is that overconfidence. They now have this new sense of independence and freedom, and they so want to take advantage of it. But with that, freedom and independence comes great responsibility because it's not just you on the roadway. It's not just you and your passengers on the roadway. It's you and every other road user. So whether it's another motorist in another vehicle, a pedestrian, a bicyclist, you're responsible. We're all responsible out there for everybody on the roadway, not just ourselves. What do you think parents of teen drivers should be doing in addition to a conversation about safe driving? Is there anything else that parents can do to kind of guide their kids into avoiding a situation during these hundred deadliest days on the road? Sure, as, as the parent of a teen driver, I can say that you can talk and talk and talk. And while they do listen, they will eventually shut you off because they know everything, right? It's modeling that safe driving behavior that really works. You might not think that it does, but since the time those kids were so little, they, they watch what their parents do. They watch how we walk, how we talk, how we eat, all of those things. Uh, they're watching what we do behind the wheel. So if we're not engaging in those behaviors, then they know that it's not something they should be engaging in. And the, the opposite is true. If they see a parent with a phone in their hand and having a conversation and trying to text, not looking up at the road, slamming on the brakes, because they lost you know train of thought that's what they're going to do behind the wheel so as a parent we should be modeling the behavior that we want our teen drivers to emulate yes would you say there's any value in maybe even taking like a defensive driving course maybe during these summer months Oh, of course, there is always value in more education. So, you know, again, as the parent of a newly licensed teen <laughs> driver, it's one thing to teach your own child to drive. Um, however, a defensive driving class gives the student gives the teen another voice so it's not their parent and then maybe they're thinking oh wow yeah that's what my mom said um, but to hear it from another voice and someone who is an authority on the topic uh, it kind of sits different with kids yeah sure a voice that they're not tuning out <laughs> uh, so first of all good luck with your teenage driver Thank because you. I think that is <laughs> one of those nerve-wracking things to even kind of think about and and just sort of a reminder for other uh, adult drivers on the roadway as well to be patient do you do you have any other reminders for adult drivers on the roads for the summer months? You know, we're looking at that hundred days between Memorial Day and Labor Day, and everybody is ready to have fun, as you said, uh, out there going from 
place to place and enjoying, you know, barbecues and pool parties and getting to the beach. Uh, but safety comes first when you're behind the wheel. Uh, people should remember when they get behind the wheel to focus 100% on the task at hand. Buckle up. It's the best safety feature that we have in our vehicle is to buckle up. Um, follow the rules of the road. Follow the posted speed limit. Leave plenty of following distance. Remove distractions and please do not drink in, or drive impaired. Yes, absolutely. Well, Jaina, thank you so much. This is extremely informative. And I think, again, as people do gear up for all that summer fun, you, you want to make it <laughs> to your summer fun destination. Sure, you do. Everybody deserves to make it home alive. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Once again, uh, it's always a good reminder to, again, be patient. Don't be distracted on those roadways and make sure you enjoy your summer to the fullest. But don't go anywhere because there's more coast life and more summer to enjoy when we get back.